Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone. Welcome to your number one source for Native American television news. Native News Today. I'm your host Jason Salzman here in the Muskogee Media Studios as we are ready for this week's episode. We hope everybody out there has had a great week leading up to today. Lots of things happening in and around Indian Country. We're keeping our eyes on all the national news happening, uh, whether it be up uh, in North Dakota, up in those areas, and, and others. We are keeping our eye on the National Pulse, and uh, you can find all kinds of stories right now on muskogeemedia.com. We have a special treat today. We are focusing on our health administration, our health system, uh, specifically the plans moving forward. And in studio, we were visited by the Acting Secretary of Health, Shonin Alexander Ross, and Mr. Roger Jenkins, who is a consultant brought in to look at the health system. We'll talk to both of them after this first break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Native News Today. It's more than just an associate degree. It's a life-changing experience. You'll see a lot of cultural features here on the campus. You'll see a symbol of the mound, which goes back to the history of, of Muscogee people as being in that Mississippian time period, that mound building society. That really welcomes our students whenever they first get here. The college in itself is beyond the building, is the people. They're passionate, very passionate about what they teach, and it shows whenever they're teaching. The instructors and the administration, they really believe in their students here. After a couple classes, I began to notice that it kind of felt as if I were returning back to something, something that had been lost for like a long time. As I learned more about the history of my people, to discover that there were very many great people that did a lot of good things for their people, for their nations, and that those people were American Indian and Native American, it kind of brings out a sense of pride that was not really there before. There is a future for our people. Looking for your next 18-hole adventure? Then take a look at Fountainhead Creek Golf Club. Nestled in the beautiful confines of Lake Eufaula State Park, large sloping greens and well-placed bunkers characterize the Muscogee Creek Nation's Floyd Farley design course and offers a fine test of skill for any golfer. Stay up on all the latest gear and equipment with a visit to our pro shop. Have lunch at the turn at the Clubhouse Grill. We're waiting to accommodate you at Fountainhead Creek. Give us a call at 918-689-3209 or visit fountainheadgolf.com to book your next round. Fountainhead Creek Golf Club, close to home, far from ordinary. We believe if you teach a man to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. We believe that transitioning convicted citizens back into our communities enhances public safety. We believe that every citizen, even ex-prisoners, are important and are capable of change. We believe in reclaiming our citizens and investing them back into a culture that embraces healing and restoration. We believe in reintegration. And welcome back to the program. As I said in the opener, we have some special guests that stopped in studio this week to talk about our health system. Previously, in some of our coverage here at Muskogee Media, Chief Floyd did indicate that he would be bringing in some health uh, consultant professionals to look at our health system, to see what's happened, and to see where we can go forward uh, fixing some things. So, with that in mind, Mr. Roger Jenkins with Southwest Hospital, Hospital Partners is one of those helpers. He came in and talked to us about his work here at Muskogee. Pleased to be joined now in Muskogee Media Studios with Mr. Roger Jenkins with Southwest Hospital Partners. Uh, sir, thank you for being with us today here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, really, we just wanted to ask you about how you came to be partnering with the Muskogee Creek Nation, specifically its Department of Health. Um, <clears throat> we were asked uh, by uh, Chief Floyd if uh, we would be interested in uh, helping the nation 
uh, with um, the turnaround of uh, the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were fortunate enough to be engaged and have been since the 1st of June. Uh, so we've been working through the assessment of the Department of Health, which has uh, been completed. And uh, now we'll turn towards uh, moving the Department of Health forward. Well, I guess the, the million dollar question is, what did you find in your review? What, did, what are some of the things that you looked at and saw? You know, the Department of Health has gone through a, a lot of uh, trials and tribulations. Um, it's had lots of leadership changes. Uh, and the hallmark of any great organization is stable and consistent leadership. And I think that's one thing that's been lacking uh, with the department for quite some time. Uh, I think part of that led to uh, some acquisitions um, that have been problematic for the department, uh, but not catastrophic. Um, so we're looking forward to working with them on developing an integrated delivery system, uh, which will position the department well for the future. When you say acquisitions, uh, are you thinking that's the main uh, probably what we're looking at here, or is that well, just I one of the, the I larger? Think it's it's uh, um, multifactorial. Uh, the uh, reality is the uh, Department of Health has long been known as uh, operating uh, primary care clinics. Uh, they operate seven of them in six different cities uh, within the tribal jurisdiction, and they do a fine job of managing those enterprises. Um, but they were asked to become a hospital company almost overnight um, with only one hospital in their portfolio, they took on three more. Um, and that's a, that's a big ask, that's a big jump uh, for any uh, company and the lack of information systems and the lack of subject matter experts on their staff uh, made it even more difficult. So it's been a, it's been a big hill for them to climb, uh, and, uh, but fortunately they've weathered the storm and uh, it'll position them well for the future to have all those resources and facilities uh, but they've got to be um, um, set up in such a way that they're efficient uh, and able to deliver what the citizens of the nation need. Now, when you said that there's a lot of turnover in leadership, things like that, that's, that can be applied to many different fields. Why specifically was it detrimental for the Creek Nation Department of Health? Well, the interesting thing about the Creek Nation um, is that if you look at uh, long-term planning, they don't have any. Um, if you uh, ask around uh, what's the five-year plan, uh, nobody really has one. Um, and that's usually a function of leadership, and that leadership starts uh, with the board and goes all the way through the organization. Um, and there wasn't really any evidence of that, um, and that's not unusual. Uh, we see that with a lot of our clients. Um, but part of having a, a, a good map and knowing when you've arrived uh, is knowing what the plan is. Uh, and that's something that we'll have to work on with them is to make sure uh, that we kind of know where we're going. Right. You look at plan, I like that word that you said there, and then putting it in a place. What, what do you suggest now? I mean, these are things, as you said, you've seen these things before. Are they fixable problems? Absolutely. Hey, that's the good news is that uh, while um, you kind of wound up where you are by uh, accident, um, the, uh, the good thing is, is that you're in a good place uh, as far as the future is concerned. Um, if you look at what's going on nationally, you see a lot of uh, discussion um, about uh, population health management. And uh, you see uh, pioneer health organizations have been tried in 12 different locations around the country. And basically they're taking a population and they're serving all of their needs through one integrated delivery system. Um, you all are already there. You already have a defined population, the citizens of the Muscogee Creek Nation, uh, and they already looked at the Department of Health for their health care. Uh, so you already have parts of it. Now you have the delivery system in which to deliver it. The system just has to learn how to work with all of its component parts. Uh, and that'll take a little doing, uh, but the good news is, is you have all the parts. Now we just have to get them to work together properly. So now that your review is complete, what is the process here? Do you report now to Principal Chief James Floyd, his office, what capacity? I, I work uh, with the Secretary of Health uh, to uh, kind of help them uh, move the process along. Uh, right now, uh, as with every tribal enterprise, they're working on their budget cycle. Uh, so we've been spending a lot of time getting uh, this next year's budget ready. Uh, so everybody knows um, how that's going to play out. Uh, so once that's done, then we'll begin to work on some more of the structural problems 
such as productivity management and things like that, uh, so that they can better manage the businesses uh, that they have established. Wonderful. Now, is there anything further that you'll be doing other than just reporting your findings to the chief? Um, we'll continue to work with them in developing uh, systems and management tools, uh, as well as developing the staff. Um, you really don't have a lot of subject matter experts, uh, especially on the hospital side of the operations, uh, resident on the staff of the Department of Health, so we'll fill that gap while we continue to develop the talent of the folks that work at the Department of Health. Wonderful. Now you said about some of your other clients, uh, you've seen some similar things. I wonder if you, in your capacity, have ever worked with tribal health systems other than the Muscogee Creek Nation? Yeah, we uh, have actually had uh, engagements uh, prior to. My uh, partner uh, and I have both worked in other uh, tribal enterprises as consultants. Uh, and my partner has worked as a line manager uh, in, a, in another tribe. So, yeah, we do have experience with it. Uh, most of our experience, though, is in the private sector uh, and trying to work uh, with uh, not-for-profit and for-profit hospitals around the country. Do you see any trends in tribal health, that things that they're having to deal with that are um, specific to their situations that may lead to things that, that come up? Yeah, I mean, I, I think tribal health in general is undergoing some pretty significant changes. Um, for years and years, tribal health was dominated by the IHS and uh, programs that they outlined and the policies and processes that they had in place. Uh, but all tribes now are experiencing growth in what is usually referred to as third-party revenue. Um, and that's because uh, the nation's citizens are aging, so more, more of them are becoming uh, Medicare beneficiaries, uh, and that changes the makeup of the delivery system for health care. Um, so it becomes uh, less and less dependent on IHS uh, and more and more dependent on third-party revenue streams. And that's a pretty big shift for an organization that's used to working in a different way. Integrated delivery systems, could you explain that to people that may not know? Sure. Um, Integrated delivery systems are basically healthcare organizations that are able to deliver healthcare services across a wide spectrum of care. Um, generally speaking, inpatient care is one side of it and outpatient care is the other. So think of it as your doctor's office or a hospital, okay? Uh, but inpatient care also includes services like skilled nursing facilities, uh, rehabilitation, uh, uh, inpatient rehabilitation, uh, things like that. And then it also includes outpatient services like uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, as well as the doctor's office. Um, very few delivery systems can do all of it. Um, so that's where the term integrated comes from, is that you have a delivery platform that can do all of those things. And that's one thing that, that uh, the Muscogee Creek Nation enjoys with its Department of Health is it covers almost all of those platforms. We've got some gaps to fill, uh, but the, the core parts are here, and that's the thing that's exciting and, and something to build on. You give us a timeline of when your review and the, the actual process of your work here with Muscogee Creek Nation will be complete. Um, I think it'll be several years. Um, we have lots of things to do to make all of those component parts of the Department of Health work with each other. Uh, as well as help the Department of Health uh, better manage the operations that they have and develop the talent that they need to be able to do it. Uh, so there's uh, going to be a pretty long engagement, I suspect. Um, you know, if things go great, it's probably a year and a half to two years, um, but it could easily be three. Is there anything else that you would like to add, maybe, that we've left out to this point? Uh, you know, um, the wonderful thing about this engagement is uh, you've got a lot of great people trying to do the right thing uh, for all the citizens of the nation. Uh, and uh, while the Department of Health has had its struggles, um, it's certainly focused on delivering excellent patient care every single day. Uh, and that's something that we don't always see with clients, and we're happy to experience it here uh, and qu quite thankful for it. Mr. Roger Jenkins, uh, Southwest Hospital Partners. Thank you so much, sir, for not only being with us today, but the work you're doing for the nation here. Thank you very much. And there you have the interview with Mr. Roger Jenkins with Southwest Hospital Partners about what he's found uh, looking at Muscogee Creek Nation Department of Health, uh, some of the things he's identifying and where they're, what they're working on moving forward. Another person that came in and stopped in with us, uh, we were very glad to have in studio, Shonin Alexander-Ross, the act 
acting secretary of health. She is working hand in hand with Mr. Jenkins, uh, with Chief Floyd, with the administration, the council, around the clock on health, and this was what she had to say. Happy to be joined with Shonin Alexander Ross, uh, the acting uh, Secretary of Health here at Muskogee Creek Nation. So glad to have you in studio. Thanks for having me, Jason. You bet. Um, just talk about the current status uh, of, of the Health Administration. How do you feel uh, now that we've sort of hit this problem head on, um, we've started to take the steps, we've brought someone in to look and help. Um, how do you feel about the current status? I think we're headed in a forward direction. I think it's a great time to be at the Department of Health. Um, we certainly appreciate having our partnership with the Southwest Hospital Partners, Mr. Roger Jenkins. Um, through the executive branch, I think we've got a lot of support from Chief Floyd and Second Chief. Um, so I think it's a good time to be at the Department of Health. We're making lots of change, but change for the better. If, you know, you look at what's happened and you see, you know, you bring in Mr. Jenkins and, and you know, he's looking at everything. Not only, like he said, the leadership and the turnover and mm -hmm. some of that, but not only that, but what's happened with the finances and some, um, some leaks, as you said, some things to kind of plug up. Is, was there like a large deficit when we looked at what we had, you know, when, when it was, came out that there was this large deficit? But there were other people maybe saying, oh, it really isn't that much of a deficit. Was it as bad as it seemed or as it was portrayed? I think there was a lot of misinformation maybe through the rumor mill and just um, just being misrepresented. Um, of course, there obviously is some um, improvement that we need to make um, and some of that is still being um, D discovered and discussed, but in terms of the finances, um, I think the information that was put out at the March um, extraordinary session was on point in terms of figures um, that came that was delivered with, from Chief Floyd. Yeah, and now we've, as you said, and as Mr. Jenkins has said, it's sort of figuring out what's going on and now moving forward. Mm -hmm. So what kind of plans are you putting in place or have you discussed to sort of take what he's found and put it into action? Um, I've had the pleasure of working almost elbow to elbow or shoulder to shoulder, if you will, with Mr. Jenkins um, throughout this process. And we're literally turning over every rock, looking in every crevice that we can, um, trying to find all the opportunity to make the right change. And I think we've been um, certainly aggressive at doing that. Um, you know, in terms of, of what our direction is moving forward, we're trying to figure out how we can always balance revenue with expenses. Um, right now we're going through the budget cycle. Um, making plans for FY17 and things that we can do in order to put the health system in a really good position financially, um, make, put it in a sustainable position financially, and um, we're making changes to do that. Now, anytime uh, we have a situation like this, obviously it is good to um, take, uh, you, you know, the steps forward and making sure it doesn't happen again or just fixing, you know, the deficiencies, but there have been some tough decisions you all have had to make too. Can you talk about just what went into a lot of people either reassigned, relocated, maybe even losing a position? Um, how tough that was for you all? You know, historically, if you look back over the last couple of years, we've really grown really fast. Mm -hmm. Um, what we've tried to do over the course of the last 90 days or 120 days is go in and look at where our needs truly are, um, where, where we may have overstaffing or even understaffing, because there's a mixture of both, and trying to put those resources where they best suit the Department of Health. Um, that has led to some change, but I think it's changed, again, as I said before, that will put us in a better position for the future. Um, you know, as with any organization, you have to maximize the use of your resources, and I think we're trying to work smarter, not harder, and be um, more, you know, be a better steward of our resources. And we've looked at, at that at all levels, not only um, from service lines and evaluating, you know, are we able to provide the access that we need to to our patients, how well are we doing, can we improve, um, but also looking at what we don't have in terms of service and what potentially we could bring in in the future. So a lot of the prior years has been a lot of excitement about health, which was, which was what was such a, um, a quick turn because you had facilities opening, like we said, acquisitions. Um, there was event after event, and it was looking good. But then you get to the point where now, you know, people worried about because of these problems, 
you may have to close facilities. Has there been any talk about that, of closing facilities or anything? Um, you know, I think we're always looking at, at, again, I'll go back to a statement I just previously made. Can we balance um, the revenue with the expenses? Um, we're, we're certainly not out to, to close any facilities per se, um, but we are looking at where we can strengthen those. And, you know, it's just like in any industry, you have to be able to um, operate in the black. Um, and that's something that um, we, we've had to dedicate a lot of time and look at how um, we're able to do that. In some areas, obviously, you know, we've, ha we've had deficits or shortfalls. Um, we looked at what do we need to do to recover from that, you know. Revenue failure is something that um, many organizations experience, and in healthcare, it happens. It's happening all across Oklahoma. If you look around, you see, you know, out west, there's hospitals that's closed, you know, even in uh, areas that are in our jurisdiction, we've had hospitals close. It, it's, a, it's a tough industry to be in, um, but I think our objective is to try to position the Dar Department of Health and all of our facilities in the best way that we can and to help maximize um, the services we have and do so in a cost-effective manner. At a recent, the most recent uh, Health Education Welfare Committee, um, you had quite a bit on the agenda, but uh, among those uh, items were a few uh, budget mods for personnel issues. Um, is that a reflection of sort of having to do some, still having to plug some holes and, and fix some things with the finances? Um, we actually did have to modify um, the fiscal rehab center's budget. And I would just, you know, say across the board, just like in every industry, um, it's really important that staff understand the budgeting process mm -hmm. and something that's that we've discovered um, within the Department of Health is we've not always been strong at matching revenue to expenses. If you look at our um, reports that we receive every month in terms of our budget, it talks about where we are in terms of what's been budgeted for um, the program, but it doesn't necessarily show what we've been able to collect in revenue. So that's one change we're trying to make. As a manager, you need tools that show you exactly where you are. Um, they, they need to be well understood so that you can make the appropriate decisions. And I think in FY17, you'll see that um, we've engaged the staff at the local level, trying to get them involved in the budget and have some ownership um, of that budget. Um, at the end of the day, they're making decisions right then and there in the facility that affect those those line items, and we want to make sure they're armed with the best information, and that's something we'll continue to work on. We also look at reaction to something like this, and by all means, we're going to have citizens that are upset, some that are wanting to wait for things to come out, some that are wanting to hear from those uh, that know the status. Um, but what would you say for those that want accountability for where it went wrong, as to say uh, who's, who's going to be held responsible or just who's going to stand up and talk about the realness of this situation? Well, what I would say, I can tell you what we're doing now. We're trying to make some changes in, internally um, across the system. We're also addressing um, the composition of the governing board. We've worked very closely with um, Chief Florida and the executive branch, as well as um, received input from the National Council on how we can modify the makeup of that board. Um, the way it's been designed, I guess, historically and um, almost to even present day, because we're still making these changes, um, we've largely governed ourselves and that's that's not necessarily what the board was designed to do so we're looking at how we can bring in maybe an advisory c committee or um, some other members that would be external to the department of health so that we can have input from the citizens um, and other community members about maybe the strategic direction of the the department of health um, largely, that's what the governing board should be doing, is setting the strategic direction um, for the future of the Department of Health. So making changes like that, I think, um, makes big strides in accountability. Um, checks and balances should be in place. They're always a good thing. I mean, the left hand needs to know what the right hand is doing, and we're trying to make those changes in order for that to happen. So having to do with the tough decisions, if you could, maybe a rough estimate on a number of people that were directly affected and also uh, your strategy now um, going forward to where these people will be have the resources, job fairs, things like that, placement, what you are doing along with the nation uh, to make sure that they're taken care of. 
Um, we've actually, um, between the Department of Health and um, Tribal IT, HR, and Finance, we've had a merger. Mm -hmm. um, we've done that to not only consolidate for cost savings, but to create more efficiency and to bring those areas um, in the Department of Health back underneath the executive branch. Um, Chief Floyd is very committed to getting anyone that's been displaced from the health side into a position. And I think, and Jason, I'm just going to roughly speak mm -hmm. off the top of my head, I think um, of the 20 staff members from that HR, IT, and finance merger, eight of those have already been repositioned back into the tribe, and we're continuously working on that. Um, it's just been a few weeks, so um, just today in my office I uh, had a letter of recommendation come across. Or, finished a letter of recommendation for one of the staff members, so we're, we're working diligently trying to help staff members get repositioned somewhere in the tribe, and if they choose to go external to the tribe, we're supporting them as well. In the process of restructuring, uh, a lot of citizens would probably uh, have a concern about any change in services. Do you uh, expect or uh, ex expect any change in services? Um, with the integration of ITHR and finance, I can't foresee that there are going to be any changes that impact um, patient care. Um, that's that's one of the things I think has been really discussed very thoroughly um, with both IT, HR, well, and including finance, um, that patient care is our priority. Um, IT, I know, is on board. They understand how important the um, electronic health record is to our providers and how it can impact care. So I know that's um, one of their main focal points. So at this time, I can't see that, that any of the services will be impacted. Great. Well, uh, Shonin, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't covered here? I would just say that the Department of Health, while we're going through some changes, I think, um, as Mr. Jenkins said, we're in a really good position to have um, a system that meets the needs of our patients. Um, in the future, and while um, some of this change has been uncomfortable, I think it's going to leave us in a better position in the future. Wonderful. Well, Shonin Alexander-Ross, the Acting Secretary of the Department of Health here at Muskogee Creek Nation, thank you so much for uh, sitting with us today and answering some questions, and uh, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Jason. Well, that'll wrap up the episode for this week. Want to let everybody out there know if you'd like to watch those interviews again, they are available on our online channel. Also, they'll be accompanied with a story from Jessica McBride on muskogeemedia.com. You'll definitely want to check that out. You need to check out muskogeemedia.com anyways. It's such an exciting time around here. We're going through a lot of changes. We're making a lot of moves. We're doing things that will help us bring you better, more innovative coverage, uh, faster, uh, accurately, the way that our citizens need it about our tribe and really Indian country abroad. So we want to thank everybody out there for visiting our sites, muskogeemedia.com, uh, YouTube, go to our online channel. We've uh, gone over a good milestone in our subscribers, so a lot of people are getting our videos. And you can always check out past episodes there as well. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we got uh, giveaways and prizes going on galore. So follow us on social media. Uh, for myself and all the good people here at Native News Today, you all have a great week. Thank you.